In this episode, we add racks to our Velox Bank network and populate our racks with network devices. Velox Bank has racks for network devices, for compute, and for storage. So we'll start by adding these as rack rows. We have the first one, which is for network. These are for our network devices. We add the next one, compute. Choose a different color and storage. With our rack rows added, we can add our racks. We'll focus on the Velox Bank data centers, which are in Accra and Dublin. We'll add two racks per DC. In the Accra DC, we'll have a network rack and a computer rack. Same for our Dublin DC. So let's get going. In Accra DC, we'll add a DC network rack one. This active, this for our network rack, would focus on the keypad Velox Group, Velox Bank. This is 19 inch 42U. So be it. So we have a rack. We can clone this, then have a second rack, CR for computer rack, 01. Active, this is a computer rack, Velox Group, Velox Bank, 19 inch 42U. We'll create and add another. This will be in our Dublin DC. Dub DC network rack 01. This is our network rack. Create and add another one. Dub DC compute rack. Compute. And we create. So we have our racks created. With our racks created, we have to add devices to the racks. Before we add devices to the rack, we must define the manufacturers of the devices, the roles that the devices are playing, the platform of the devices, device types, and we can add the devices. So let's start by adding the manufacturers. We have three manufacturers. We have Cisco. We have Juniper. Now HP. Then we have some Dell service. There we go. We have our manufacturers created. After adding our manufacturers, we have to add our device roles. We have devices performing different functions like access switches, core switches, one routers, VPN gateway and application servers. So let's go on and add our device role. We'll add the first role manually, which is an access switch. This won't be deployed as a virtual machine. So we'll uncheck this and we create. We have our first device role as an access switch. We'll add the remainder via bulk import. We have name, slug, color, description and vm role we are adding a core switch one router vpn gateway and an application server we hit submit and there we go we have our five device roles let's add a description to the access switch we edit description devices within the velox bank network will run on an operating system. We call this the platform. So next, we add the platforms. There are three platforms that would add. Our Cisco devices would be on iOS XE, manufacturer being Cisco. Then we have Junos from Juniper. Then our Dell service in our network would run on Ubuntu. So we have Ubuntu. Dell is not the manufacturer, but because this operating system in our network will run on Dell, we'll select Dell in this case. We have our platforms created. The last step we need to do before we can add devices is to define the device types. For example, within our network, we'd have different device models for different device roles. We would need a Cisco 9200, 9500, 
we need a Juniper MX, we need a Juniper SRX, we need a Dell server. The reason for defining the device types is to provide us with a template that defines the number of interfaces, type of interfaces, console port on the device, number of power ports, the power draw, and all of us. Luckily for us, the Netbox community repo has template for different kinds of devices that we can import into Netbox. So let's look at that. In the Netbox community repo, we go to our device type library, look at our device types. We have different vendors. We'll start with Cisco. We'd need a 9200 for our access, 9200. Put eight port for our access. We copy, come to Netbox, device types, we do an import, and we paste this here. We can leave the format to auto detect. Netbox is able to detect that this is YAML, or you can select YAML. So we have our device type imported, and as you can see, this indicates the number of interfaces, the types of interfaces, console port. Power port, the maximum draw, the module base, and all of that. So we proceed with our next import. It will be a 9500. One, we copy. Then we do for our Juniper devices. Last, we we'll look at our Dell server. With our device types imported, we can proceed and add our devices in our racks. We'd we'll focus on our Velox Bank data centers would add a call switch and a VPN gateway in each DC. So let's start, go to devices. We add a device. Our first device would be a call switch in the Accra DC, call switch 01. Device role, there is a call switch or description, call switch in Accra data center. Device type, this is Cisco Catalyst 9500. Focus on the key aspect side. We put this in the Accra DC. Location, we put this here. In the rack, we select our CRA DC network rack. Front, the position, we select a rack unit for this. So let's just put this in 10. Then this is active. Platform, iOS XE. Tenant group, Velox group, Velox bank. And that should be it. So we create another. This time, we add a VPN gateway. Roll VPN gateway. This is a Juniper SRX. It's in our cloud DC. It's in our network rack. But let's put this in a different rack unit. Let's say 12. That should be it. In fact, let's add one more. Let's add an application server. So, uh, crowd DC, server 01. This will be an application server. This is a Dell device. It's in our crowd DC, all right. But we put this in our compute rack and we can select a rack unit for this. And we create. So if you look at our devices, we have three devices currently all in our cloud DC. If we look at our rack, we have these four racks and some devices in the racks. And if we look at our rack elevations, 
we have an idea of where these devices are positioned. So you can add other devices in these racks or in your Dublin rack, but you should know how to look at it. Next episode, we'll look at deploying our central controller or our automation engine. If you found this helpful, kindly hit like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.